Have you ever tried to stitch the perfect circle? Well, it's not as easy as you might think. Sounds easy enough, but it might be a little bit of a challenge. I'm Barb Owen, and today's class with Barb Owen Designs, I'm going to show you some different ways to stitch a perfect circle. So I'm going to show you, first of all, what we're going to, some of the different tools that you might use to stitch that perfect circle. <clears throat> first of all, you know, you could use an old-fashioned compass. You could draw the circle and you could stitch around it. That's one way. You can buy various circle templates that are available at office supply stores and various places, you know, and you can draw, <clears throat> pardon me, in the circles. Or you can put a pencil point in here or a pen, something to hold this, and then you can put your pencil out here and you can do different size circles. It's a great tool for doing things. It's just a little challenging if you want to stitch the perfect circle. Drawing the perfect circle, easy. Stitching the perfect circle could be a bit of a challenge. So we're going to set those two great little tools to the side. Another way that you can stitch a perfect circle, and this now becomes a way to stitch it and not just draw it, is you can use a piece of painter's tape, which this is really sticky painter's tape. You can use a piece of painter's tape and you can use either an upholstery tack, which is, lay this down here where you can see it. This one's an upholstery tack and this is a thumb tack. You would use one or the other of these and I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. Let's see if I can unstick my tape here. That's really some sticky tape. Some sticky tape. I'm going to show you how to do that. <clears throat> or you can even get a little fancier and you can buy an attachment that goes for your machine. And this is by far the easiest thing to use. And so I'm going to show you how to do this. And most machines have a circle attachment, circular embroidery attachment is what it's called for most machines. Uh, and most of the major brands of machine companies out there will have something of this kind, this type, may not look exactly like this, but it's going to be similar to this. So I'm going to show you how to use that. And then toward the end of the class, I'm going to show you how to use the flower stitch foot. This is a very inexpensive foot to purchase. It can be a little finicky, but it is a great tool to add to your sewing box. And it doesn't cost very much money, which is great. I mean, it's like $15 or less most places. So that's what we're going to cover in today's class, how to stitch the perfect circle. So some of the tools that you're going to need, aside from the attachment, is you're going to need some fabric. And I would recommend when you're learning to do this that you just use a piece of muslin or some plain colored fabric so you can, you know, see what you're doing easily. And it needs to be stabilized. So this has a stabilizer on the back of it. And stabilizers come in many different forms. In fact, there are other classes that I'm going to have on the site that will show you um, all about stabilizers. This is one that you can buy. You can purchase this on a bolt in the fabric store. So this comes in yardage, and so you can buy it by the yard. You can buy a half yard. You can buy 10 yards. I used to buy this fabric um, by the 10, 15 yards of, of uh, stabilizer at a time because I used so much of it when I was embroidering a lot. Another way that you can buy it is in uh, a package where it comes in a sheet form like this. This is a pretty, pretty heavy duty stabilizer and you can always layer up your stabilizers too. So you can, can add multiple layers. This one is called Stable Stuff. So this is Stable Stuff. And this is one that you can tear away or not. And so if you don't tear it away, it becomes part of your project. It stays in the project. It's washable and it just becomes part of your project, which is it's really nice. It's not a bad feature at all. In fact, I like that very much. Now to connect the two, to connect your fabric, to your stabilizer, you're going to need some kind of a stabilizer spray. Um, this is a temporary spray adhesive, so you're going to need some kind of spray adhesive. And this one, although it's a small can and it's fairly pricey, lasts a long time. But there's many different brands of these. This one, the nice thing about this is that it um, 
it will evaporate out of your project. And so that's nice. It's ozone friendly and it, um, let's see, I was going to tell you exactly what it says on here, but I don't see it right at the moment. Anyway, this is supposed to be an environmentally friendly one. Of course, we all care about that. So this is one you might use, but like I said, there are lots of other ones on the market. You just need something that's a temporary spray adhesive. And the way you work with any of these is you shake them up and put your, put. I put the stabilizer part, the back part, I put that in a box, a big um, cardboard box that I have, you know, a nice box in um, that I have in my sewing room. And I put this down inside the box, the stabilizer in the box, and then you hold this about six inches away and you spray it. So you spray the stabilizer and then put it, apply it to your fabric. Now it also says on this particular one that if you want it really um, sticky, that you could spray the back of your fabric and also the uh, stabilizer and then put them together. But I usually find spraying just the stabilizer is adequate. So you're going to need to do that. So this has been put together already. What else are we going to need? You're going to need needles. <clears throat> So this is the kind of needle that I'm using today is a top stitch needle and the size is 9014. A top stitch needle has a bigger eye and it has a, um, uh, a longer groove in the shank of the, the, the uh, front of the needle, the scarf of the needle in the front here. Scarf, let's see, scarf for the front of it? It's the front part of the needle. Needles have anatomy, and my needle anatomy is rusty today. <laughs> Just know that there's extra room in the front of the needle in that groove and has a bigger eye. <clears throat> so when you use these threads that are embroidery threads that are a little touchy sometimes, it puts less stress on the thread. And when you're doing these pretty decorative stitches and this pretty decorative work like you're doing with stitching these perfect circles, you want it to look good. And you want to give yourself every chance to get a good result. And speaking of embroidery threads, there are different kinds of embroidery threads available. This is a real shiny one and it's made from rayon. Uh, the shiny threads also are available in polyester, which is what this one is. And it will tell you on the spool, so it tells you right up here, this says polyester right there. So it's a polyester thread. This one Let's see, this one doesn't say it on the spool. So this, um, I just happen to know that this is from the company Sulky and this one is Rayon. This one is from the company Mettler, right here. This is Mettler and Mettler always marks their spools with what the fiber content is. You can also get machine embroidery threads and cotton. Now they're not packaged like this anymore on the cardboard spools, but they're still available with the um, cotton embroidery. And this is also from the uh, Mettler company. And it tells you down here on this particular spool, it has the word cotton down here, but the new packaging is on the plastic spools like these. And so they would be labeled up there on the spool, on the top of the spool. So you're gonna need some pretty threads so we're going to have, we're going to do that. And let's see, what else do you need? That's all I can think of for right now. So that's where we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the circle embroidery attachment because I'm going to show you how to use it first. And then I'm going to show you how to use the thumbtack or the upholstery tack. But you'll get the process with this and then you'll see how the thumbtack part of it can work. So this tool comes with a couple of parts. It comes with the part that attaches to your machine. So it has a tack right here. So this thing right here is a tack and it's sharp. Let's see if I can show that to you a little better with this one. Yeah. So this is a sharp tack. It's kind of like a thumb tack right there. And that is going to be the part that's going to hold your fabric. So we're going to put that on there. And you have to have a screw 
to attach this to your machine. Now this particular one comes with two screws, so you have an extra. And it also comes with another little thing I'm going to show you, with this little kind of clear plastic, well translucent plastic knob kind of thing. And the idea behind this is that you put your fabric on this pin, this little tack, and then you put this thing down on top of it and that's supposed to hold your fabric on and keep you from poking your finger or your hand. I honestly find it kind of worthless so I just leave it in the little plastic bag that I've put my other stuff in because I just find it doesn't help me. Um, it actually irritates me so I don't use it. But <clears throat> the tool is designed for you to do that. So I'm just telling you what I do and what they recommend with this particular tool. Now, different machines um, that have their attachment like this may be fashioned a little bit differently, and that's fine. Just follow the instructions for installation that come with your machine. So that's how this one hooks onto this machine. One screw puts it on and it's good to go, and it's nice and stable, so that's great. So this is how it works. You decide where you want your circle to be. You're going to put this right down on top of that tack. And let me scooch in just a little bit so you can see a little bit better right there. And so you can see that it fits right down, the fabric fits right down on this tack, just like this. And I have black thread in my machine, black embroidery thread, which is fine. You'll be able to see it really well. The feed dogs are up. So the feed dogs are up and functioning. And then we're going to pick a stitch. And so we'll pick, I'm going to pick this, well, let's see, this stitch. This is a feather stitch. So I'm just going to get my Foot control here, ready to go, and then just I just hold the thread just till it gets started. And then what's going to happen is the fabric is going to rotate based on where this little pin is. <laughs> and it's going to stitch in a perfect circle. That's it. It stitches. And all I need to do is just make sure that the fabric stays on this pin, which very, very rarely does it come off. And the only other thing I have to be careful of is that the fabric doesn't get, get um, against the arm here or the, the um, in the throat area of the machine. It doesn't get backed up right here where it doesn't want to feed smoothly sometimes if it's if you are too stable which there is such a thing <clears throat> it might get in here and it might restrict the fabric you don't want it to be restricted at all by your machine or by hanging off the table or anything you just want to let it uh, feed freely as it stitches in the circle so and the other thing you don't want you want to do is stitch a little bit slower than you normally would. You don't want to go, you know, all out when you're stitching this. Because it is asking the machine to do something you know, that's not in a straight line, which is what machines are designed to do. They're designed to stitch in a straight line, and this one is now asking it to take a stitch that wants to stitch straight and stitch it in a circle. So as I'm coming around here, I'm just going to clip the thread off. And you can see that as it rotates right around that little pin right there, you're going to get a perfect circle. So now we're coming back to where the circle began. And some of the stitches will line up perfectly and some of them don't line up exactly perfectly. This one did a pretty good job. And so I just take a few really slow stitches there, and then just raise your presser foot, and then you can take it off like this. Clip your threads like so, and you have a beautifully stitched 
pretty perfect circle. Now that's nice. That's much easier than drawing a circle with a compass or drawing a circle with a template and then trying to make sure that you follow and stitch on the line. Now, if you want wonky circles, that's a great way to do it. If you don't care if the circle's perfect, do those methods, but this is a great way to do circles. So let's do some more. This little pin here moves up and down the, um, it moves up and down this little guide. You'll hear it click. So you can hear the little clicks. And that enables you to make the circumference of the circle repeatable if you want to do that. So I'm going to move this pin in a little bit more. And we're going to do some more circles. So I'm going to put this back in here and put the pin, put it, the fabric right on the pin. And then if I want to see how big that circle is, I just test it. A dry run. Okay, just like that. So I can see where that circle is going to be. If I want it to touch this one, it will in this setting. If I want it to overlap, I need to go out a, a couple of clicks. So now it will overlap this circle like this. But I'm going to make it a nice small circle for this one. And I'm going to pick a different stitch. And so this time I'm going to use just a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to make it nice and wide. And I'm going to make it a little longer than normal. So this is a decorative stitch that I had built into my machine. And the one that I'm going to use now is just a utility stitch. It's just a zigzag. So this will work with either your zigzag stitches or your utility stitches or your decorative stitches. And you just have to do a test to see what kind of result you're going to get. Is it what you expected to get or is it, um, you know, some stitches look better than others when you're doing this. And is it what you like or is it not what you like? And then we get back to the beginning. And another thing you can do with this is you can, instead of clipping the threads off close to the fabric here, you can pull the fabric out nice and long. I mean the fabric, the thread. Nice and long, the top and the bottom, bobbin thread. So I have to get a hold of it down there. There we go. And you can cut them nice and long, and then you can pull those to the back side. Just use your, either use a needle or sometimes you can just pull the bobbin thread and it will pull the top thread down enough that you can get a hold of it, pull it to the back, and tie it off. And that way you can hide where you began and ended your stitching your circle. What I'm going to do is just clip the threads off just for the sake of time. All right, so now what if we want to do a concentric, concentric circles? I'm just going to move out so I'm feeling the little pin as it clicks over. I'm going to go just to a straight stitch because it will um, be a little faster to do. But as long as I use the same pivot point right here, it is going to make concentric circles. So it's one circle inside of another inside of another. Now again, over here you can see that that my fabric is going to hit against the um, arm of my machine right here, or the uh, this is called the throat area, so it's going to hit against this part of my machine right here. And so I want to be a little careful. I'm going to pull this up when I stitch around that so it does not get restricted in the flow as I stitch. So just be careful of that. If you're working with something that's got some size to it, you just want to make sure that you don't restrict that fabric. And so you can see now that now I have a, I have concentric circles going right here. And it will come right back and it will join exactly 
up with the place that I began. Perfect. So let's say we want to make another one. So I'm just going to move over. This time I'm not going to cut the thread. I'll cut the threads later. So as long as it stays on that same pivot point, it will stitch as many circles as you want to stitch. Around and around and around. Perfect. It is a great attachment for your machine. Now as you come over here to the edge, this may be, you know, it's not going to be so, it's not going to be long enough to, um, or the circle's not going to be wide enough to stitch off the edge, but I'm going to show you how to deal with that here in just a second, if it does stitch off the edge. So we're back at the beginning. And again, if you want another circle, if you wanted just a circle that was really close to the one that you just did, you just move it over one click, and then you can make concentric circles very close to each other. So really, I hope you can see that the sky is the limit. Now what if you don't want to do a whole circle? Well, you don't have to. You can just do partial circles. So you can come over here and let's say I want it to end. I want this circle to end right here as part of my design. So I just come over here to this part where it intersects with this the previous circle and I'm just going to take it out and this is a place where I would indeed pull the threads to the back and tie them off. So oftentimes what you can do is back here on the back side you can get a hold of the bobbin thread and you can pull it and you'll see a little loop pop up and that's the loop from the top thread right there. And you can get a hold of your a pin, get that loop and just pull it to the back and then you can tie those off and you can see now that my top thread, which was right here, that's where it ended, is now down at the back side where I can just tie them off. So it works great. So let me get rid of these little threads over here, these connecting threads, just so they're not so distracting to look at. So there's, there's what we have so far. Okay. Now what if we wanted to do a circle that was just a partial circle. So I'm going to put this back on. Now let's see if we put it here. So I'm going to put it back on my pin right there. And I'm going to check and see as this rotates around where is that circle going to go. Okay, this is just going to be a partial circle. So this will be a fun one to do. So you check and see, does this line up with the design that you're after? And in this case it does. And I'm going to select a stitch like a scallop stitch. And I'm going to sew. So this is a straight stitch scallop. Again, watching that this doesn't get hung up over here against the machine. Don't sew too fast. And you just sew. Just kind of every once in a while come over here and just kind of check, make sure that it's on your staying on the pin the way you expect it to be. And then sew to the edge. And that's how you do, that is as simple as it is to do a partial circle. And if you want to do concentric circles, your concentric partial circles, you can do exactly the same thing. Clip the thread down here. I'm going to leave it on the pin. Okay, I'm going to leave it on the pin. And then I'm going to move in. Come over here to the beginning point. And I'm just going to use the same stitch just because. You can get some really interesting stitches based on using the same stitch over and over, the same stitch selection. So you can do concentric circles that are um, not complete circles also. And this one actually is going to go the whole distance because there was enough room on the fabric to do it, just almost, and that's far enough. 
It's just about to come off right there. So we'll just take it off and cut your threads. So this is pretty dramatic, even just using the black thread and kind of the, this is off-white muslin that I'm using. And so that's got a pretty dramatic look just with the black and the cream. So there's what we have. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, now I want to show you one other thing that's really, I think is really interesting to do. And that is, you can do applique circles also. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put my pivot point. I'm going to make the circle fairly small. This is kind of a three-step process. So I have decided where my circle is going to go. I'm going to use my applique fabric, and, which is going to be, in this case, it's going to be red, kind of a reddish orange. And I'm going to put this, uh, add this to the pin right here. So I've added that to the pin. Then I'm going to turn this around and, and do a test run to make sure that, I've, uh, that I have enough room on the patch that I'm going to use for my applique. Make sure I have enough room down there that that my patch is big enough. Okay, so step one, do a straight stitch. So I've selected a straight stitch, and I'm going to straight stitch on here now because this is kind of uh, not a stabilized fabric. You might even starch this. This might help give it some stability. You're going to kind of need to make sure that it's nicely smooth, that you don't end up getting a, a gather or a wrinkle in it because you want this to be a nice, smooth circle. So I'm not doing anything to help it. I'm just smoothing away from the needle. But I'm letting the machine feed the fabric. I cut off my little tail so I can really see what I'm doing. I'm going to stitch all the way around in the circle. Once you get to the where you began, then you can take it out, take it off the pin, take it out of your machine, like so. Okay, and so we have an applique patch on the front of our fabric. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a pair of applique scissors, and these are duck build applique scissors. It's called a duck bill. And this is engineered, designed, so that when you put this on here and the scissor blades stay flat to the fabric, that you can trim around here and trim very close to the stitching all the way around. Okay, now what if you don't have a pair of these? This is this works really, really nicely because it will trim very, very closely to that stitching using these without cutting the background fabric. That's what they're supposed to do. If you don't have those, you use a pair of small scissors like the ones you use at your machine as long as they're nice and sharp. And this way, you're going to turn the scissor blades flat to the fabric. Now, if you were let, I'm right handed, so I'm going to go from right to left. If you were left handed, you're going to go the other way. But by laying those scissor blades flat against the fabric, you're going to be able to do your trimming right up next to that stitching. You want to get as close to that stitching as you can without cutting the stitching. So very, very, very close to that stitch all the way around. Now this pin, pin hole right here where I had this on the pin is still visible to me. It's right there. And so I'm going to use that and put it right back on the pin on the circle embroidery attachment. So I'm going to put it back in here and you just need to find the pin and the hole. And you want to go back in exactly the hole where you were starting out. And we're going to hope that I got it back on the same place. I'm going to 
just a bit of an awkward angle here, so we'll see if we we'll see how well I did, right? Okay. Now you're going to select a zigzag stitch, and I'm going to make this stitch a little less in width than I intend it to be in the end, and a little longer than I intend it to be. So I'm going to go at about a 3.5 width, and I'm going to do about a one or about a 0.75 length. And now we're going to go and I'm going to zigzag over this so it's not quite a satin stitch. So you can see it, how it's going over the edge, right over the raw edge of the fabric, and it's also going over the stitching that we stitched to begin with. And it is now appliquing that patch that applique right down on top of your fabric, on top of your background fabric. Once we get back to the beginning, I'm going to stop just exactly as I get to the beginning. I'm going to stop and I'm going to increase the width of my stitch to the stitch width that I really want it to be and I'm going to decrease the length to what I really want it to be. So now I'm going to stitch over it again. It's going to make the stitch a little wider, a little shorter and now I'm going to get a good satin stitch. But I find it helpful to do that in two steps. And you get a much better thread coverage over the edge of your applique, and it looks really pretty when you do that. Really pretty. It has a very beautiful, finished, professional look when you do it in two steps. So I'm going to stop here where I've done half of the second applique and pull it out so you can see what we've got. So not only have we stitched the circle to begin with, but we have applique it down. This is the first row of stitching. You can see that it, and that's a perfectly acceptable stitch, but if you want it to have a satin stitch look, then you want to go over it a second time, slightly widening and shortening the stitch to make it a um, more of a satin stitch. Now this hole in the center with cotton fabrics, you can usually just lay this down on your table and usually just scratch it with your fingernail and usually those, fi those fibers will relax and go right back where they came from and close up that hole for you. If it doesn't close up the hole, then what you might want to have to do at some point, you might put another little embroidery or you might add a button or you might add some other embellishment over that if that um, hole, some fabrics will mark with that hole and so you might need to do that. To add something there take it as a design opportunity. And let's say you wanted to do another um, applique, another size circle. So you've designed, you just, you've either decided where it's going to go or you've just simply, um, you're just playing around, which is what I tend to do. I like to just design and see what the fabrics will do. I just like to, to see what the fabric does, see what the machine does, just get creative with it. And then I'm going to twist it around after I've put it on there. It's a little, little short there, so I'm going to move my patch of fabric over just a little bit more, my applique fabric. Make sure I have enough fabric under the presser foot. And then I'm going to, actually I'm going to make it a little, let's go a little bit wider. Yeah, that's fine. Right there is fine. Just making sure that I didn't mess myself up. No. Okay, so I put it down. The first thing, the first step again is a straight stitch. And you, if you have needled down on your machine, 
that is a it's a good time to use it when you're doing these things to smooth that applique patch of fabric keep it smooth because that is not stabilized like your underneath fabric is and as I said it's a really good idea to starch that fabric that will help give it a little bit of stabilization and then if you get any wrinkling that's trying to happen just smooth it out and then you've done your first step creating your new circle so I've stitched completely around in a perfect circle I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim really close to that and if I want to make the stitch narrower or change the width from this one to this to give it interest and variation you can do that just make your the width of your stitch a little narrower than you want it to be in the end and then go back over it with a second stitching make it a little wider and a little shorter and then you've got even more interest involved and you're even more creative in using your circle tool your circle embroidery tool so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to a new another tool and we're going to use the flower stitcher oh i know what i want to show before we do that i want to show you how to use the thumbtack so let me do that in case you don't have one of these tools and you want to play with it play with the, the technique right away i'm going to show you how to do that so we're going to take the circle embroidery tool off the machine don't you love it how people say, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, and I'm the one doing it, right? <laughs> I'm going to take the tool off the machine. So it just requires taking the screw loose, removing the attachment, and to use your uh, low-tech method of doing this, you just simply put your thumbtack or your embroidery upholstery tack that we're going to use to embroider with and I try to get it kind of out from the needle this isn't critical not critical and then I just use a piece of painters tape to tape it down to the bed of my machine the reason I use painters, painters tape is because it doesn't leave a bunch of residue on the bed of my machine so there's my tack. I'm using an upholstery tack because it's nice and big for you to be able to see it. And then I'm going to put this tool, use this tool to put my fabric right down on top of it. So there's my pivot point. And then I'm going to check and see where is that going to go. Okay, that'll work that's fine if you wanted this to be a different pivot point you're going to have to untape it and move it whereas on the tool remember it just you just clicked it and you could move the pivot point that's what is the advantage to this one of the advantages to using a tool but this is going to be fine so what we're going to do with this one is I'm just going to use a um, what's called a three-step zigzag and I'm going to make this, I can alter the stitch width and length a little bit. But other than that, it's going to function in the same way as the tool did. It's just not as convenient and it's not as repeatable as easily as if you use the tool. But it's very doable and it's a way that you can, can um, play with doing it and also it's a way to find out if you even like doing this if you think you're going to use it enough to invest in it so there is using an upholstery tack now if you wanted to do concentric circles that's a little bit more of a challenge with using the the low um, what we call kind of the low-tech method of doing this. You're going to leave the tack in the center here and you're going to have to untape it carefully. So you're going to have to reach under here and untape 
Okay, but leaving the, the um, point in the same place and then you move in to whatever dimension you want to use. And then stitch. Now you get more variation doing this because you don't have something that's quite as predictable. The effect is not quite as predictable as it is with the tool, but there it's perfectly adequate. It's a perfectly adequate way to do it and you still will be able to stitch good circles. I'm going to pull that off, take my tack away, <clears throat> and clip the threads. It'll be easier for you to see. Now the threads, um, when I came back around, the stitch wasn't exactly perfect, but pretty close. So these two circles, this one and this one, were done using the tack. Now the upholstery tack does punch a bigger hole in your fabric because it is a bigger tack and you can see there's a bigger hole right here. Sometimes that will, the fibers will relax enough to close in that hole and sometimes with the bigger tack like that it might not. It just depends on your fabric so you're just going to have to try it out and see you know, what works for you. So there you go. So you now have an attachment and you also have the ability to use a thumbtack, which is shorter, but it also has a smaller point, or an upholstery tack. Oh, and also I wanted to tell you in the upholstery tacks, those upholstery tacks usually are quite domed. You know, this has quite a dome on it. And so what I've done is I've flattened that dome out. So I've flattened that so it will sit flat against the bed of my machine. So you will need to do that. The thumbtack, the old-fashioned thumbtacks, are pretty flat on the uh, on that that area of the thumbtack, and so it generally will lay on against the bed of your machine smoothly, which is great. All right, so let's go to the flower stitcher because that I want to show you how that works. The flower stitcher works with your utility stitches on your sewing machine. And this is the flower stitcher. Looks just like this. It's a funny looking foot. It generally comes with some instructions, sometimes depending on where you buy it. Sometimes they're in uh, a different language. This one happens to have some instructions in English, which is very nice. Shows you some different ideas. So, it, and you can use and use a twin needle with your flower stitcher, which is great. It's a lot of fun to do that. But basically the way it works, is you have to attach it to your machine. Now on this particular machine I have to add this shank <clears throat> which is an adapter shank. So different machines do different things. Um, yours may not need an adapter shank but this machine did so that's what I have. It's the same shank that I use for attaching the ruffler and some other feet that um, are adapter that require that adapter. Now, the way this foot works, it has this metal um, bar here, and that goes over the needle bar, the needle clamp uh, screw, the needle screw that holds your needle in your machine. So this little um, metal bar has to go over that. And then this little part right here is the part that goes around the ankle of the machine or the shank of the machine, and that's what holds it onto your machine. The other part of this foot is a little wheel and you'll hear it click as I turn it and that's what actually makes the stitches form and then we have some little marks right here Let's see if I can show them to you right there there's some little marks and there's a minus and a plus so over here on the minus side the circumference of the circle is going to be smaller when it's on that setting and on here on the plus side, it's going to be a wider 
circumference, but this does small circles, and I'm going to show you some examples of that here in just a second. So to adjust this, you're going to loosen this screw. So you loosen that, and then this will move from one side to the other. So let's put this on. Now this is kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach. Sometimes, sometimes it goes on just perfectly. Other times you kind of have to um, get your, hold your mouth right because it has to fit over the needle bar and it has to fit around the ankle all at the same time. And once it goes in the right position, it's there. And then I find that it's helpful to just use a screwdriver and screw that screw in. And once you get it going and everything lines up, it works really well. And I'm screwing this in with my left hand, which I'm heavily right-handed. So you'll see that the awkwardness of my left hand is exactly that. Awkward. Okay. I'm going to put the presser foot down and I'm going to give it one more little tighten, tightening. So it's finger, it's lady tight onto your machine. Okay. Lady tight, not man tight. Now with this machine, you've got to have the feed dogs down. So draw or with this attachment, it's really, it's, this one is kind of in between attachment and attachment and a foot. Technically it's a foot because it goes on your machine the way that it does. You know, it's a self, um, it just attaches to the machine. It's not like you have to have separate screws to put it on. So this is technically a foot, but it's, it's kind of, it's a little more involved but it's fun. All right, so as I said, this little screw back here loosens up and this wheel moves from side to side, okay? So I'm gonna put it over here on the plus, as far over as it will go on the plus side. Tighten that screw down back there and I truly have found that it's very helpful to just have a little pair of pliers on hand and I put those pliers on there and I just give it a little bit of an extra, you gotta go the right way. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Yeah. So just a little bit of a to tighten it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So have a little pair of pliers there. Don't tighten it very tight, but just enough that it it doesn't want to move on you. Okay. So the way it's going to work, I need to get some of this fabric out of my way here, just real quick. So give me just a second. So that I don't stitch it down and get it get it in our way. So I'm just clipping this th fabric out from around the orange circle that we did just a second ago. Okay, just get it out of the way. So I got the orange extra orange fabric out of the way just so we don't need it. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to lower my foot. Now I've, I have I um, have put the feed dogs down on my machine. And this works the best with utility stitches, which are construction stitches. They're the ones that put things together, put garments together. So I'm going to use my three-step zigzag stitch. And the only thing I have any control over is the width of the stitch. The length, because the feed dogs are down, the, that's irrelevant. But I do have some control over the width, so I could make the stitch wider or narrower. But let's just give it a whirl so you can see how it works. And after I've taken two or three stitches, I'm going to clip my thread to get it out of the way. And it is really important when you're doing this that this does not get impeded at all. So you've got to make sure that your fabric support your fabric so that as it stitches nothing gets caught if anything gets caught if this edge of this fabric gets caught at all it will throw off your stitch so just guide it and don't sew too fast 
But other than that, everything else is the same. The fabric is stabilized. I'm not working on a big piece of fabric. I'm not sewing very fast. And I have come all the way around to the place that I began. And then I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to show you that with the three-step zigzag, which is typically a stitch that you might use to put in elastic or um, use in a construction manner, it makes this pretty little flower. So that is how the flower stitcher works. So let's do it again. I'm going to do the same flower, same setting, but again, supporting my fabric so that it doesn't get hung up any place. And if you have the needle down, I'm not going to use the needle down function on here just because it, um, it gets in the, it strobes in the camera so it becomes kind of obnoxious but it's a great feature to use because then everything stays where it's supposed to stay. When you stop, the needle goes, sinks into the fabric and no nothing will move on you. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around and some of the stitches will line up perfectly. As I come back around, we're gonna see if this one does. And it does, so I'm gonna stitch around a second time because that will give us just a little heavier look our flower. So I'm going to stitch around it a second time. And once I've stitched all the way around, I'll take it out and show it to you. Okay. <clears throat> so we've stitched twice and that gives you a little different look. Get rid of all these little thread tails. This one's being really obnoxious. There we go. So now we have stitched around once on this one and twice on this one. You can see the difference in the in how what the, the uh, thread coverage is. So this little flower makes a little more presence makes itself known a little bit more. All right, we're gonna do it one more time, the same stitch. And let me get the thread tail out of there. It's just, if you will get, get started and then cut off that top thread tail, it just keeps it from getting wound up or, um, you know, making a knot. If you have the ability to adjust the presser foot tension on your machines, a lot of machines have that capability now, you can make this thread, that tension of your presser foot tighter, and that will help also with this, um, with this particular foot. Now I'm gonna show you something fun. You can take this and you can rotate this little wheel and you'll hear it click, and different stitches require different numbers of clicks. I'm gonna try five. and we're gonna see if it's the right number. But you, this is where it really takes a lot of um, experimentation and notes. But by moving that little wheel, the right amount of clicks, you can make a totally different look to your flower. And again, you can go around that multiple times to give it um, an even heavier look. But by doing that, where I've changed the, where I rotated, get rid of this little thread here. Let me clip out this thread so you can really see. You're not distracted by the threads. Okay. So by moving that little wheel, once I had com completed one round of the petals, by moving it five clicks, then it offset those 
the same stitch as this and it ended up making it look like it had closed or completed petals on the flower. So that's a way that you can play with that. So don't be afraid to play with it and figure out what you can do to get creative with your flower stitcher. All right, now let me show you some other things, a uh, couple of other things with this, and then I'm going to show you some projects that I've done. Okay, I'm going to leave the foot up, and this is where you may have to use your little pliers to loosen it. And then I can move my, move the whole little wheel moves from side to side. So I'm going to make, go to the um, <clears throat> tiniest circumference, the tiniest diameter of the circle. And I'm going to tighten that up again. Yeah, I found that using that tightening device really helped because sometimes this can work loose with the vibration of the machine. So um, they don't tell you to do that in the instructions. I just find that that's helpful. Okay, I'm going to use another stitch, <clears throat> another utility stitch, and this time it is on the tiniest um, circumference of the circle. And I'm going to go all the way around. <clears throat> Again, making sure that I'm supporting the fabric so that it doesn't have any tension or obstruction on that freely moving fabric. Now I'm going to loosen this screw with my pliers. Okay, so I've loosened it, and now I'm very carefully going to move the entire thing. The fabric is down, the presser foot's down, and I'm going to move the whole thing in one movement over as far as it will go, and I'm going to tighten the screw down, and I'm going to make the stitch as wide as it will go, and I'm going to stitch again. And when I get finished, I'm going to take it out and show it to you. Okay. So I'm going to pull it out and let you see what I did. Now you got to get all these little thread things out so you can really see, see what it's doing. But that was exactly the same stitch done on this, the um, tightest setting on the minus side and then moved the whole thing moved over to the plus side and that is exactly the same stitch and it's a utility stitch and it is um, kind of like a blind hem stitch. And it's particularly important with these if you want these little stitches to look good that you're going to need to pull the threads to the back and tie them off. So you're going to need to leave yourself long thread tails so that you can tie those, take those to the back and tie them off so you can really see a nice neat look on the front. But that's the flower stitcher. So that's how that works. Fun, fun, fun little foot to use. So what I'm going to show you now is some ways that you can get creative, how you can combine these stitches, and I'm going to show you some different ways to do that with some different projects. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to move my machine out of the way. We'll leave our little sample up here on the machine. And the first thing I'm going to show you is this pillow. And this is a white on white, okay? So it's a very elegant tone on tone effect that you get, other than the buttons are a different color. But the stitching is all tone on tone. So the stitching is off white on, this is just muslin. So that's all it is, it's just muslin fabric. But you'll see, I'm gonna give you some examples, some close up examples here. 
using the circular embroidery attachment, there is a, a big circle here. There are some smaller circles right here. There's a couple of circles there. Here's another one up here, right here. And another one over here, right here. Coming around, there's another one down here. Right there. So those are all done, all of those big circles. Here's another one right here. All of those big circles are done using the circular embroidery attachment, okay? Now, the smaller circles, these are all done using the flower stitch foot. So these are all the flower stitch foot, these little teeny ones, these little bigger ones, this one, this is all flower stitch foot using utility stitches. This is the one we were just playing with right here. Let me see if I can get really... Right here. So that is the, the little flower that we were just doing with that three-step zigzag. That's it. But you can see how pretty those little flower stitch flowers are. There's another one where I've twisted the foot and I've gotten not complete petals, but I've gotten some offset petals. So all of those little bitty flowers are from the flower stitch foot. You gotta admit, that's kinda cool. So that's that. And even the circles right here, these yo-yos were created by sewing perfect circles using the uh, first attachment I showed you and then creating the yo-yos out of them. And here's another example of the flower stitch foot. So this is on this quilt that I've done with all different techniques on it. But this is the flower stitch foot to create all of those different flowers. And some of them have multiple, multiple stitchings, like this is the yellow is the tiniest circumference here. The pink on the outside was using the, the uh, widest circumference, and then the, the round in the middle is using the middle setting on the flower stitch foot. This has two different rounds on it. This one has two, the tiny one and the big one. So you can just get, just by playing, you can get all different kinds of effects using that flower stitch foot. Then this, the leaves and this grass is formed with free motion embroidery. On this next block right here, this is uh, using the circular embroidery attachment, this one, because the big, they're bigger circles. And these are using a pivot point. Each one of these uses a pivot point outside this circle. So I was working on a bigger block. Uh, bigger size block, so I put the pin out here and then I sewed just partial circles, partial concentric circles on each one. And some of these, like this one with the flower, it, this is done with an, a wing, a single wing needle. This is done, this honeycomb stitch is done with a single wing needle. So there you can even stitch with things that are needles that are beyond your normal needles. And this stitch right here, this is a flower stitch done with a regular needle. This one up here is done with the wing needle. So it has a, a more lacy look when using the wing needle. So that is all using the circular embroidery attachment. And one more thing I want to show you. If you like to embellish garments, this is a shirt. This is just a uh, denim, lightweight denim shirt that I bought actually at a um, secondhand store and I took this and put the flower stitch motifs down here at the bottom. Now because this is such a big project it will never work as a big project. It doesn't have the flower stitch foot can't deal with all that weight from the garment. So I cut, I sliced the sleeve off, sleeve off 
because the sleeves were too long, so I sliced it off. You can see right here, it's been cut. And then I used that, just this small section down here is all I had in my machine so that I could create those flowers. So there's that side. And then here's the other one. Same thing, I sliced off the sleeve, created my all my little flower garden using the flower stitch foot and all different colors of thread and then I sewed the sleeve back on and then put a piece of trim on it so you could see it to hide it. So hopefully that will give you some ideas of ways to stitch perfect circles and to embellish things and just to how to get creative and just just go with it. Just see what you can come up with. So thanks for joining me today. I'm Barb Owen of Barb Owen Designs. Check out the class notes that you'll find beside the videos. And if you've enjoyed this class, please tell a friend and I will see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.